but it is so weedy here. weighs a ton. It's such hard work to get it away from the front of the boat. Whew. Just dragging it along, slowing us down. Ridiculous. Well, this is ridiculously weedy. We are just cruising three, three and a half miles to fill the tank up with water. We need um, to charge the batteries up, get some hot water. So it's a nice cruise, we thought, but it is so weedy here. I just had an island of this pennywort stuck on the front of the bow that took me five minutes to clear. It's so heavy. But uh, I just don't think it's going to be any better the further in we get. Somebody's just told us it's even weedier ahead. So I'm at the front with the hook, just uh, picking it off as and when I can. This is not fun. I'm getting so wound up about it. Canal and River Trust seem to have just forgotten about this canal. This has been the quietest canal we have ever been on. The traffic on here is non-existent. You know, we've seen two boats pass us in a week this week, this last week, and all through the summer as well. It was really, really quiet. So uh, I don't know. I just think this is a very low priority. This canal for Canal and River Trust. And it's a pity really, because it's just in such a beautiful part of the world. Absolutely gorgeous. Ha! Just missed that one. I've seen so many dead fish, I've counted six. Not just small fry either, large carp bellied up on the water. And this is what this weed does. It just chokes, starves the water of oxygen and uh, therefore killing everything else below it. Can you eat it? Hey? Can you eat it? Somebody said you can. Someone on the blog said you can eat it on the comments. Apparently you can eat this stuff. <laughs> You're on your own. You're on your own, I'm not doing that. <laughs> go there's a massive island of it stretched right across the canal i'm going to advise fran just to keep as close to the towpath as she can oh this is a nightmare well i managed to push that big island of it away from the front which is great so we've got a hundred yards now of clear canal lovely eh sitting there on a nice afternoon cup of tea listen to the radio put your feet up read a magazine nod off joy i like that one Yeah, that's my favourite. Well, this has been the worst journey we've had since we had to reverse two and a half miles last year on the River Witham in Lincolnshire. But uh, here we go, we've got 200 yards of clear canal. What's this? Do I detect a weed clearing machine boat gadget thingy in the middle of the canal? Oh, what's going on? Well, there is an operative on board with pole in hand, clearing the weed from around his boat, his weed clearing boat. 
So I hope he's not stuck because of the weed that he's clearing. Anyway, he's aware of our presence. So we just have to hover here and see what happens. Well, he's on the move again. Does this mean that the canal ahead of us is going to be reasonably clear? Fingers crossed. If it is, then I take it all back what I said about the Canal and River Trust. Enjoy your local canal. Well, Fran's taken us over this side of the canal. She said she's trying to avoid the weed. Ah, death of yet another pub. Well, this is apparently where it's supposed to be the worst. So hopefully man in said machine has cleared up the worst. That would be great if he has. So far, so good. How's it going, Captain? It's okay, apart from being wet and a bit cold. But that was difficult um, manoeuvring because you can't always see, you can't see right in front of the bow. So you have to look ahead work out where the gaps in the weed are and get through them. Then you've got to look at the back and make sure you don't get weed around your prop. And also look out to make sure that the captain at the front doesn't fall in. Captain at the front. And doesn't lose, lose, lose control of his pole. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes to hear that, do they? Oh, look at this. How cute. Always a sign that there's a large house nearby. So the bridges are posh. So when we fill the tank with water, we're gonna turn around and uh, moor up this neck of the woods somewhere. And we'll wash everything that we can for this stuff. And we're filling up, while we're filling up, washing up will get done, two lots of washing. And then hopefully we won't have to move the water might last us for a week. It's always a challenge, isn't it, washing on a boat? Because there's, especially this time of year, there's nowhere to dry the bloody no, stuff. It's I so could, damp. I could easily do two lots of washing, but I can't dry it. So I think we've got dry days for a couple of days. So we'll just do what we can. Oh, well, there you can see, I think it's lock number 65 in the distance there. Having work done on it. Uh, for at least another three weeks before we can get through. So we're just above that bridge, filling up with water, and I've just popped down to have a look, see what's going on. But uh, ain't walking any further, because there's no point. Well, I got up at silly o'clock this morning uh, to be picked up by our friend Simon there. You might remember Simon from last year, we exchanged houses. Well, he came on our boat for a week and uh, we stayed at his house for a week. Anyway, Simon's a photographer. He's got his own YouTube channel, Simon Booth Photography. And he's picked me up today to spend uh, a day walking around the woods here on the edge of Blackburn and taking photographs. Also with a friend of Simon's, David. And it's really interesting. Uh, I'm a bit of a happy snappy photographer, but Simon's a lot more considered in his approach and uh, he doesn't take a picture unless he really wants to take a picture, if you know what I mean. And it's really interesting looking at it from a different point of view. So uh, we've been out for a couple of hours now. We're gonna have breakfast soon and then come back again to take some more pictures later. But I'm really enjoying it. It's uh, a nice day away from the boat. This is an incredible ancient woodland. So many big beech trees here, it's beautiful. And this time of day, early morning, the light and the sounds are just magical. And uh, some porcelain mushrooms up there, Francis.
Oh, we're having a great day. Had ourselves a nice brunch. And now we've moved on to the second location of the day. A beautiful, beautiful woodland in Lancashire. With a lovely river running by. So learning lots, learning just to stop and look more than anything. That's uh, the most I've got out of today so far is just to stop, look and see what's around your immediate vicinity. And it's surprising what you, what you don't see. That's it, all done. Great day. Thanks to Simon for picking me up. And uh, got a, just a, a mile to walk back to the boat. I'm going to have an early night, I think. Apart from just being a fabulous place to bring the dogs and walk them and play ball with them, this park also has this fabulous sweet chestnut tree. And while we've been here, the chestnuts have all dropped. Most of them are quite small and not usable, but every now and again, if you look around, you find a lovely big fat chestnut. I'll see if I can find one now. Here we go. So that's a perfect sweet chestnut. Now if you can see it's got a little tassel on the top of it and that's what distinguishes it from a conker or a horse chestnut which you cannot eat. But these sweet chestnuts they come in these prickly shells, look like little hedgehogs and um, all you need to do is split the shell about a centimetre down into the shell and then boil them for about 20 minutes. And once it's soft inside, while they're still warm, but cool enough to handle, you peel the shell off. And we use those to go in a mushroom and chestnut roast for Christmas dinner, or you can just eat them as they are, and they are delicious. But I'll go and try and find a proper conker now, a horse chestnut, which are not edible, just so that you know the difference. So this is our sweet chestnut with its spiky shell and its little tassel on the top of it. And this is a horse chestnut, no tassel and a much, much spikier shell. And the horse chestnut is flat, completely flat with this big mark on this side. I think in America they call them buck size. But yeah, not edible, but you can make soap from them. These are the ones we want, they're delicious. So welcome to Fran's energy saving tip part of the video. Every day we cook our bread, or most days we cook bread in this little oven on top of the Hungry Penguin stove. But I've just discovered that we can cook our breakfast eggs in there too. They just go into a couple of little um, egg poacher cups in the oven for about 10 minutes and it's gorgeous. So breakfast with no energy expended. Brilliant little stove, we love it. Well, we're coming to the end of our stay in Adlington now, and uh, it's only a matter of a day or two before we can get through the Wigan Lock flight. Hopefully. Hopefully, fingers <laughs> crossed. 
it's already been delayed once and um, it's now a bit of a waiting game and it's all about getting our timing right. When we first arrived here, there were no boats here and there's quite a queue now, mm. isn't there? Yeah, we're there surrounded is. either side, all of people waiting to go through. There's messages going backwards and forwards on Facebook, who's pairing up with who and what's happening. But if we go down too early um, and we can't moor down there, we might not even be able to get access to water. Um, mm. And there's there's not a lot down there. If we leave it too late, we're going to be at the end of the queue. So we're just sort of carefully biding our time. Really. Who, knows? <laughs> Who knows? So Wig and Flight consists of 21 locks straight after each other over the course of a mile and a half, something like that. And then when we turn the bend at the bottom and uh, we've got another two locks to do after <laughs> that. So there's 23 locks, wide locks It's been a, in a day. long time since mm. we've done anything like that. And I don't think they're easy locks. Um, there's a group on Facebook out, which is called the Wigan Flight Crew and it's been brilliant. But they put out lists of um, the things to look out for on the on the locks and it's making it so scary. There's massive fire washes and there's gates that don't yeah. open properly and... Yes, <laughs> so interesting. It is with some trepidation. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we've had such a nice time here in Adlington. We've met some viewers uh, that live in the marina uh, here, and that is Dawn and Duncan, yeah. and also Janet. Yeah. So hello to you all. Yeah, and it's they've been lovely, and they've bought us so many presents. I've had goodie yeah, bags, and I've got an advent box of tea, tea. bags, different tea bags, and bags of wool to weave with and some a little box of goodies it's just been lovely they've I've been lovely a people sketching pad haven't i in, in, a, in a zip up folder it's been really nice and really, you had a trip really to really an art thoughtful. shop didn't did you did have a trip to an art shop yes yeah, so that was brilliant even if it was costly <laughs> but uh yeah really good time here and two of your favorite shops have been here as well recently haven't they yeah it's the the best place for boaters to stop everybody on a boat should stop here Two minutes one way off of the canal, there's a fabulous greengrocer that is so much more than that. They sell flour and biscuits and tin stuff, cut flowers, everything. Run, and run Burgess. That that's is, right, yeah. yeah, Run Burgess and really, really friendly people. And then the other way, there's a eco-friendly, environmentally friendly shop that you can weigh your own stuff out and all go, yeah, um, environmentally friendly detergents everything it's just been fabulous yeah i we can't haven't... get excited myself but there you go well actually you did get excited when i brought you sweeties back oh, you from did. the shop yeah, you didn't did. you yeah um but we've not been to a supermarket for about no. two weeks yeah, at least done really well yeah everything you need is here so yeah stop so thumbs up to adlington yeah we've now got to uh, run the gauntlet of the weedy canal again <laughs> to get down to wigan yeah. but hey ho it is what it is and uh Hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll be down there and videoing it and uh, showing you next time. You do say these things, don't you? That is just jumping the gun a bit. We'll be fine. <laughs> Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. We'll see you soon. Ta-ra. Bye.